Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. I always thought I was careful with how I approached security online. I didn't give out info to unscrupulous websites and I always entered strong and unique passwords for my accounts. One thing I didn't realize was that sometimes how secure you attempt to be online isn't always enough. Hackers love to target places like video game companies, streaming services, and other commonly used websites. These companies are prime targets because they have a ton of customer data. They don't, however, have to adhere to the same security requirements and regulatory demands as hospitals or banks. So that's why I'm excited to partner with today's sponsor, Aura. Aura is identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, a VPN, password management, and antivirus software all combined into one easy to use app. The thing that sold me on Aura was how it monitors the dark web for your emails, passwords, and social security numbers. When I first signed up to the service, I was given a massive reality check. Aura found over a dozen instances of my personal information on the dark web. It found my username and password available for hackers to try and steal my info. Whenever it finds a new instance on the dark web, it sends alerts fast to your phone or email so you can take action immediately. Aura also gives you near real-time alerts on suspicious credit inquiries, like someone else opening a loan or credit card in your name. They also have VPN services for safe, anonymous browsing to keep potential hackers from stealing your info. Protect your family and yourself from identity theft by going to aura.com mtg or clicking my link in the description. And if you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two-week free trial with my link. You can see for yourself how many times Aura finds you or your family members' personal information on the dark web. A big thanks to Aura for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Ryan piloting the partner pair of Timna the Weaver and Jessica Thrice Reborn. This is a Mardu Turbo Ad Nauseam deck that uses Timna to grind value and Jessica as an infinite mana outlet. Ryan's opening hand contains a Felwar Stone, Jessica's Will, Dark Confidant, Demonic Tutor, Lotus Petal, Wooded Foothills, and a Luxury Suite. Next, we have Dan from Moderately Anonymous MTG piloting Kess Dissident Mage. This is a Grixis Ad Nauseam list, which is basically just Mardu for cowards. This deck seeks to resolve Ad Nauseam and win with Thoracle, Breach, and Dockside. Dan's opening hand contains Jeweled Lotus, Gemstone Caverns, Flusterstorm, Swan Song, Ristic Study, Ancient Tomb, and his London Mulligan is a Cabal Ritual. After that, we have Kevin piloting the partner pair of Safina, Spear Sage Deserter, and Cecily Haunted Mage. This deck seeks to grind value, generate clues, and win with a Time Sieve combo. Kevin's opening hand contains a Delay, Demonic Tutor, Mana Confluence, Mana Crypt, Ranger Captain of Eos, Esper Sentinel, and a Bloodstained Mire. Finally, we have Cal, piloting Nemrus, Unus Trickster. This is a classic draw grow control deck, leveraging its commander to gain additional value. Cal's opening hand contains a Flusterstorm, Mox Opal, Underground River, Toxic Deluge, Soul Ring, Flooded Strand, and an offer you can't refuse. Without further ado, let's kick off this automatic anonymous autobiographical autopsy. Ryan had the best Italian accent, and it gets it to a start us off. But Dan has a pregame action and puts Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Jeweled Lotus. Ryan draws a card for turn and plays a Luxury Suite. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts a Demonic Tutor. He fetches up a card into his hand. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Felwar Stone. Hoping that no one has a turn one Dockside, Ryan passes. Dan draws a card for turn and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps it to help cast Ristic Study. Ryan is suddenly happy that he went first as Dan passes the turn. Kevin draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Scrubland onto the battlefield. He casts Esper Sentinel. Ristic triggers and Dan draws. Kevin ends his turn. Cal draws, plays an Underground River, and passes. During his upkeep, Ryan wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Windswept Teeth. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Scrubland onto the battlefield. He casts Dark Confidant, paying the Ristic Tax. Ryan chips the turn to Dan. Dan draws, plays a Scalding Tarn, and passes. Kevin draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He casts a Mana Crypt, paying the Ristic Tax. In response, Dan cracks his Scalding Tarn and pays a life. In response, Ryan flashes in an Archivist of Agma. Ristic triggers and Dan draws. Archivist resolves, then Dan fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. Ogma triggers, and Ryan gains a life and draws a card. Then Mana Crypt resolves. Kevin passes to Cal. At the end of Kevin's turn, Cal taps his Underground River to cast Consider. Ristic and Esper trigger, and Dan and Kevin draw. Consider resolves, and Cal surveils one, putting Misty Rainforest into his graveyard. The turn moves to Cal. Cal draws, plays a Morphic Pool, and passes. During his upkeep, Ryan's Dark Confidant and Mana Crypt trigger. He loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes 3 damage. He reveals a Savine's Reclamation through Dark Confidant, losing 3 life. He draws and plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Human as it enters. He casts Mox Diamond, paying the Ristic and Esper Tax. It resolves, and Ryan discards Wooded Foothills. He casts his Commander, Timna the Weaver, paying the Ristic Tax. He moves to combat and attacks Cal with Dark Confidant and Dan with Archivist of Agma. 
They both take it, and in his second main phase, Ryan pays two life and draws two cards through Timna. Ryan gives the turn to Dan. Dan draws, plays an exotic orchard, and passes. During his upkeep, Kevin loses his mana crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. Archivist triggers, and Ryan gains a life and draws a card. He casts his commander, Safina, Spear Sage Deserter, paying the Rhystic Tax. Kevin ends his turn. Cal draws and plays an Ottawara, Soaring City as his land for turn. He casts a Soul Ring. Rhystic and Esper trigger. He pays for Rhystic, and Kevin draws through Esper. Cal ships the turn to Ryan. During Ryan's upkeep, Dark Confidant and Mana Crypt trigger. He wins his Mana Crypt roll, and then he reveals a Ranger Captain of Eos through Dark Confidant, losing three life. He draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts Ranger Captain of Eos, paying the Rhystic tax. It enters, and Ryan fetches up an Esper Sentinel into his hand. He casts Esper Sentinel, paying the Rhystic tax again. He moves to combat and attacks Cal with Archivist and Timna, and Dan with Dark Confidant. They both take it, and Ryan gains two life. In his second main phase, he pays two and draws two through Timna. Finished up, Ryan passes. Dan draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He casts his commander, Kess, Dissonant Mage. Dan ends his turn. During his upkeep, Kevin wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He casts Grand Abolisher. Rhystic triggers, and Kevin taps his Mana Confluence to pay it. Abolisher resolves, and Kevin passes to Cal. Cal draws and casts Mox Diamond. Esper, Rhystic, and Esper trigger. He pays for both Espers, and Dan draws from Rhystic. Diamond resolves, and Cal discards a Flooded Strand. He casts Mox Opal, paying for Rhystic. He casts Toxic Deluge, where X equals 4, paying 4 life, paying for Rhystic. In response, Kevin cracks his Polluted Delta, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. Archivist triggers, and Ryan gains a life and draws a card. Then in response, Kevin casts Delay, targeting Deluge. Esper and Rhystic trigger, Kevin pays for Esper, and then Dan draws from Rhystic. In response, Dan casts Swan Song, targeting Delay. Both Esper's trigger, and Ryan and Kevin draw. With no other answers, Swan Song counters Delay, and Kevin creates a 2-2 bird. With Toxic Deluge still on the stack, and since it's going to die anyway, Ryan sacrifices his Ranger Captain, locking out his opponents from non-creature spells this turn. Then Toxic Deluge wipes the board. Cal passes to Ryan. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays a Plateau. He casts Professional Facebreaker, paying for Rhystic. He casts Dothy Voidwalker, paying for Rhystic again. He passes, discarding to hand size. Dan draws and exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He taps his Ancient Tomb to recast his commander, Cass. He plays a Watery Grave into play untapped, paying two life. Dan passes. During his upkeep, Kevin loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Badlands. He casts Ranger Captain of Eos, paying for Rhystic. It enters and he fetches up a Dragon's Rage Channeler into his hand. Kevin ends his turn. Cal draws and casts his commander, Nimrus, Unus Trickster, paying for Rhystic. Cal passes. During his upkeep, Ryan wins his Mana Crypt flip. He draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He recasts his commander, Timna the Weaver, paying for Rhystic. He moves to combat and attacks Dan with Facebreaker and Kevin with Dothy. They both take it, Facebreaker triggers, and Ryan creates two treasures. In his second main phase, Ryan pays two life and draws two through Timna. He casts Grand Abolisher. Rhystic triggers and, in response, Ryan cracks his Polluted Delta and pays a life. In response, Kevin taps his Mana Confluence and flashes in an Aven Mind Sensor, and Dan draws through Rhystic. Mind Sensor resolves, then Ryan searches the top four through Aven, failing to find. Then Rhystic resolves, and Dan draws. Then Grand Abolisher resolves. Ryan sends the turn to Dan. Dan draws and casts Mox Diamond, discarding Blood Crypt. He casts Grim Tutor. He searches the top four through Aven Mind Sensor, putting a card into his hand, and loses three life. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Talisman of Dominance. Dan gives the turn to Kevin. During his upkeep, Kevin loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and activates Ranger Captain, sacrificing it. Everyone knows that this is trouble, so in response, Ryan casts Orem's Chant, targeting Kevin. Rhystic triggers, and Dan draws. Unfortunately, Orm's Chant resolves, locking out Kevin this turn. Then Ranger Captain's ability resolves. Now, with basically everyone locked out this turn, Kevin passes to Cal. Cal draws and plays a Sunken Ruins. He casts Wave Break Hippocamp, paying for Rhystic. Cal passes. At the end of Cal's turn, Dan casts Brainstorm, drawing three and putting two back on top. Still in the end step, Dan flashes in a Dress Down, much to the chagrin of Ryan. In enters, Dan draws, and Ryan moves to his turn. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. Ryan draws and decides he's going to go for it. He casts Vanishing Burst, targeting Dressdown. Rhystic triggers and, in response, Kevin flashes in a Dressdown of his own. Rhystic triggers and Kevin pays. Dressdown enters, Kevin draws, then Ryan pays for Rhystic. Then Vanishing Burst exiles Dan's Dressdown. Next, Ryan casts Praetor's Grasp, targeting Dan, paying for Rhystic. He fetches up a card from Dan's library into exile. He casts what he searched, which is Dan's Underworld Breach. Rhystic triggers and Dan draws. In response, Dan taps his Mana Confluence to cast an Offer You Can't Refuse. Breach is countered, and Ryan creates two treasures. Stopped every way to Sunday, Ryan passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Dressdown is sacrificed. 
Dan draws and starts off his turn by casting Grim Tutor from his graveyard through casts, which he should not have been able to do because of Dothy Voidwalker. Oops, the entire table missed it. Magic is hard. He looks at the top four through Aven, puts a card into his hand, and loses three life. He casts Displacer Kitten. He casts Chrome Mox. Kitten triggers and Dan flickers his Talisman of Dominance. Then Chrome Mox resolves and Dan and Prince muddle the mixture. Dan ships the turn to Kevin. During his upkeep, Kevin loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and pays two life to cast a Taxian Probe targeting Dan, paying for Ristic. He looks at Dan's hand and draws a card. He plays a Plateau for turn. He casts Dragon's Rage Channeler, paying for Ristic. He casts Demonic Tutor, paying for Ristic again. Channeler triggers and, in response, Dan taps his Talisman to cast Flusterstorm, with all copies targeting Demonic Tutor. Displacer Kitten triggers and flickers Dan's Talisman. Then Flusterstorm counters Demonic Tutor, then Channeler's trigger resolves. Kevin surveils one, putting Mox Opal into his exile with a Void counter through Dothy. Finished up, Kevin passes. Cal draws, takes no actions, and passes. At the end of Cal's turn, Dan taps his Talisman to cast Vampiric Tutor. Kitten triggers and flickers his Talisman. He then searches the top four through Avon, puts a card on top, and loses two life. The turn moves to Ryan. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes three damage. He draws and casts Jessica's Will with both modes targeting Dan. Ristic triggers and Dan draws. Then Ryan adds five red and exiles Enlightened Tutor, Sacred Foundry, and Culling the Weak. Next, Ryan casts Wheel of Fortune. Everyone sighs as Dothy Voidwalker is on the battlefield. And since Grand Abolisher is on the battlefield, no one can respond. Then everyone discards their hands, including Cal discarding Demonic Consultation into Exile with Void Counters on them. And then everyone draws seven. Ryan casts Lightning Bolt, targeting Avon Mind Sensor. Ristic triggers, and Dan declares that he will no longer be drawing through Ristic. Then Avon dies. Ryan casts Enlightened Tutor from Exile. Dan then remembers that he runs Autowara, so Ristic is back on the menu, boys. Ristic triggers, and Dan draws. Then Ryan fetches up an Underworld Breach onto the top of his library. Ryan activates Professional Face Breaker, sacrificing a treasure, exiling the top card of his library. He casts Red Elemental Blast, targeting Dan's Ristic. Ristic triggers, and Dan draws. Then Ristic is destroyed. Ryan casts Underworld Breach from Exile. He escapes Praetor's Grasp, targeting Dan. He fetches up a card from Dan's library into Exile. He casts Culling the Weak, sacrificing Facebreaker, adding 4 black. He casts Thassa's Oracle from Exile. It enters, and with a trigger on the stack, Ryan sacrifices his Dothy Voidwalker, casting Cal's Demonic Consultation. It resolves, Ryan names Thassa's Oracle, and exiles his library. Thassa's Oracle trigger resolves, and Ryan laughs maniacally at all the YouTube comments a Mardu Thoracle win will create. Oh, and, and he wins the game, too. The gang had such a good time playing, they win again. In this game, Ryan brings back Timna and Jessica, and his opening hand contains a Diabolic Intent, Infernal Plunge, Wooded Foothills, Dockside Extortionist, Jeweled Lotus, Verdict Catacombs, and a Ragavan Nimble Pilferer. Dan brings back Kess, Dissonant Mage, and his opening hand contains a Vampiric Tutor, Forbidden Orchard, Misty Rainforest, and his London Mulligans are Gemstone Mine, Felwar Stone, Chain of Vapor, and a Muddled Mixture. Kevin brings back Safina and Sicily, and his opening hand contains a Grim Monolith, Ancient Tomb, Ponder, Tainted Pact, Spire of Industry, Intuition, and his London Mulligan is an Urza, Lord High Artificer. Cal brings back Nimrus, Unus Trickster, and his opening hand contains a Morphic Pool, Impulse, Underground Sea, Rhystic Study, Mana Crypt, Cyclonic Rift, and a Jeweled Lotus. And Dan gets to start us off. Dan draws, plays a Misty Rainforest, and passes. Kevin draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps it to cast a Grim Monolith. Kevin passes. Cal draws and plays an Underground Sea. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He casts Rhystic Study. In response, Dan cracks his Misty Rainforest, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Then Rhystic resolves, and Cal ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays a Wooded Foothills. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He cracks it to help cast his commander, Timna the Weaver. Ryan passes to Dan. Dan draws and plays an Exotic Orchard. He casts Mystic Remora. This is when Cal remembers that he has a Rhystic Study. So Study triggers and Cal draws. Dan passes. Kevin draws, plays a Spire of Industry, and passes. During his upkeep, Cal wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Morphic Pool. He casts Talisman of Dominance, and Dan draws from Mystic. Cal passes to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a Vernant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Scrubland onto the battlefield. He moves to combat and attacks Cal with Timna. In response, Cal flashes in his commander, Nemrus, Unus Trickster. Then Cal blocks Timna, and Ryan gains two life. In his second main phase, Ryan casts Fragmentize, targeting Rhystic Study. Mystic and Rhystic trigger, and Dan and Cal draw. Then Rhystic is destroyed, and Ryan follows it up with a Ragaman, Nimble Pilferer. Ryan ships the turn to Dan. During his upkeep, Dan pays to keep his Remora. He draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts Wheel of Misfortune. In response, Kevin taps his Spire of Industry and his Ancient Tomb to cast Intuition, targeting Cal. Mystic triggers, and Dan draws. 
Kevin fetches up a Sabine's Reclamation, Lion's Eye Diamond, and an Underworld Breach. Cal gives him Lion's Eye Diamond. Then Wheel of Misfortune resolves, and each player reveals their numbers. Dan loses seven, and everyone but Ryan discards their hand and draws seven. With nothing else to do with his new hand, Dan passes the turn. Kevin draws and plays an Underground Sea. He taps his Ancient Tomb and his Spire of Industry to flash back Sabine's Reclamation, targeting Breach in his graveyard. Remora triggers, and Dan draws. In response, Cal casts Swan Song, targeting Sabine's. Remora triggers, and Dan draws again. Nimrus triggers, Cal looks at the top two, putting Jace Wilder of Mysteries into his graveyard. Then Swan Song resolves, Sabine's is countered, and Kevin creates a 2-2 bird. Next, Kevin casts Imperial Seal, and Dan draws from Remora. Kevin fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Kevin ships the turn to Cal. During his upkeep, Cal loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Spire of Industry. He looks at Mystic Remora, grumbles, and passes the turn. Ryan draws and casts Dockside Extortionist. In response, Cal casts Opt, and Dan draws from Remora. Nimrus triggers, and Cal looks at the top two, putting Misty Rainforest into his graveyard. He then scries one and draws a card. With Dockside still on the stack, Dan casts Daze for its alternate cost, bouncing Underground Sea to his hand. Dockside is countered, and Ryan moves to combat. He decides to teach Dan a lesson by attacking Dan with Ragavan and Timna. Dan takes it, and Ryan gains two life. Ragavan triggers, Ryan creates a treasure, and Dan exiles Ottawara, Soaring City. In his second main phase, Ryan pays a life and draws a card through Timna. Ryan passes. During his upkeep, Dan lets his Remora die. He draws and plays a City of Traders. He casts Witchclaw Talisman. In response, Cal casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost. Nimrus triggers, and Cal looks at the top two, putting Chrome Mox into his graveyard. Then Wishclaw is countered. Next, Dan casts Displacer Kitten. He passes, discarding to hand size. Kevin draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. Kevin passes. At the end of Kevin's turn, Cal casts Mystical Tutor. Nimrus triggers, Cal looks at the top two, putting Misdirection into his graveyard. Then Cal fetches up an Ad Nauseam onto the top of his library. The turn moves to Cal. During his upkeep, Cal loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He casts Ad Nauseam. In response, Kevin casts Muddle the Mixture. In response, Cal taps his Spire of Industry to cast an Offer You Can't Refuse, targeting Muddle. Muddle is countered, Kevin creates two treasures, and Ad Nauseam resolves. Cal reveals a Ledger Shredder, Sensei's Divining Top, Delay, Consider, Submerge, Dark Confidant, Bloodstained Mire, Mox Opal, Island, Mental Misstep, Wave Break Hippocamp, Teferi, Master of Time, Limb Duel's Vault, Toxic Deluge, Soul Ring, Snow Covered Swamp, and a Muddle the Mixture, deciding to stop there. Cal casts Mox Opal. He taps his Ancient Doom to cast Soul Ring. He casts Demir Signet. He casts Ledger Shredder. With his hand stacked and ready to interact, Cal passes, discarding to hand size. Ryan draws and moves to combat. He attacks Dan with Ragavan and Timna. Dan takes it, Ryan gains two, and Ragavan triggers. Ryan creates a treasure, and Dan exiles Mox Diamond. In his second main phase, Timna triggers. In response, Kevin flashes in a Notion Thief. It resolves, and Ryan declines to draw from Timna. He plays a City of Brass and ships the turn to Dan. Dan draws and starts off his turn by casting Defense Grid. Displacer Kitten triggers, targeting his Soul Ring. In response, Cal casts Spell Pierce, targeting Defense Grid. Nimrus triggers, Cal looks at the top two, putting Brainstorm into his graveyard. Then Spell Pierce resolves, and Dan pays two. Then Defense Grid resolves. Dan casts Grinding Station. Kitten triggers, flickering Soul Ring. Ledger Shredder triggers, Cal connives, with Kevin drawing through Notion Thief, and Cal discarding Consider, giving Shredder a counter. Then Grinding Station resolves. He casts Phantasmal Image. It enters as a copy of Timna the Weaver. He moves to combat, attacking Ryan with Displacer Kitten. Ryan takes it, and in his second main phase, Timna triggers. This is when Dan remembers the Notion Thief on the battlefield, so he declines to draw through Timna. He plays an Underground Sea. City of Traders triggers, and he sacrifices it. He activates Grinding Station, sacrificing Defense Grid, milling three. Dan, a bit bummed out, passes to Kevin. Kevin draws and casts Reanimate, targeting Ryan's Dockside in his graveyard. In response, Dan flashes in a Dress Down. Dress Down enters, and he draws, since Notion Thief now has no abilities. Then Dockside enters, and Kevin loses two life. Next, Kevin taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Professional Facebreaker. Kevin passes. At the end of Kevin's turn, Dress Down is sacrificed. During his upkeep, Cal must win his Mana Crypt flip or he dies. He flips and loses. Cal sinks his head in shame, dies, and the turn moves to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He taps his City of Brass to help cast his commander, Jessica Thrice Reborn. He activates Jessica's second ability, targeting Phantasmal Image, Displacer Kitten, and Notion Thief. Phantasmal Image triggers and is sacrificed. Then the other two creatures die. Ryan moves to combat and attacks Dan with Ragaman and Timna. Dan takes it, Ryan gains two life, Ragaman triggers, and he creates a treasure, and Dan exiles City of Brass. In his second main phase, Ryan pays one and draws one through Timna. He cracks his Marsh Flats, pays a life, and fetches up a Blood Crypt onto the battlefield untapped, paying two life. He casts Infernal Plunge, sacrificing Ragaman as an additional cost, adding three red. 
He cast Diabolic Intent, sacrificing Timna as an additional cost, fetching up a card into his hand. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond. He casts Ariok Salvagers. He sacrifices his LED, discards his hand, adding three white. He activates Ariok Salvagers, returning LED to his hand. He recasts LED. Ryan presents a loop of using LED and Oriok Salvagers to generate infinite white. He then uses his infinite white to generate infinite red. He uses his infinite red to cast Jessica, Thrice Reborn, over and over. He activates her second ability, pinging each opponent until they are dead, and Ryan wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a fun set of games tonight. Congrats to Ryan on both of his wins. In game one, he overwhelmed the table with advantage and turned that advantage into a win. In game two, Ryan kept steady, let his opponents work through their interaction, and took his opportunity when he got it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like this, be sure to subscribe. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.